Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me for another video. It is Wednesday, so we have quarterbacks and kickers in this one. And later on, I'm also going to be dropping my running back rankings. But in this video, I'm going to be going over the top 25 options at the quarterback position. For those of you in two quarterback and super flex leagues, this is meant to help you out, give you some better options as you get farther down the list. And then for my kickers, top 15, the best options that I believe will have the most opportunities in their respective games. If you guys have not done it yet, you are missing out please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And then smash that like button on the video as well. I am on my way to my first 500 subscribers. You can be a part of that by clicking the button and helping me out. And with that done, let's get into quarterbacks. Leading it off per usual is Josh Allen. He's going on the road to Arrowhead in a rematch of one of the greatest playoff games in recent memory. I cannot wait to see how this one turns out. I think Allen elevates as he looks to get revenge. Lamar Jackson is up next at number two. He gets the Giants. He has been human in the last two games. He's failed to finish as a QB1 in either of those. He's going to rectify that against New York. To start my second tier, I have Jalen Hurts. I think the Cowboys make it really hard on Hurts here, but he is playing with the division on the line, and he's been on fire as of late, so I like him to be able to step up and have a big game. The Eagles have way too many weapons for Dallas to have to deal with. Patrick Mahomes is up next. He has been magical over the last three games. He had a monster four touchdown performance on Monday night. All of those went to Travis Kelsey. I think he continues to roll. Rounding out my top five, I have Kyler Murray on the road against Seattle. I believe he gets his first top five finish of the season against a Seahawks team that's surrendering over 21 points a game to quarterbacks. That is ninth most in the NFL. To tier number three, Tom Brady gets the Steelers. He started out real slow, and I know a lot of owners, including myself, had some concern, but he has caught fire over his last two games. He's finished as the overall quarterback four and the overall quarterback six. He gets a top five matchup in this one, so he is going to continue that streak. In at number seven, I have Joe Burrow traveling to New Orleans. I really like Cool Joe's chances after Geno Smith just lit up these Saints last week. He's going to post his first 300-yard game since back in week number one. Justin Herbert is next. He gets Denver. He's going to face off against that extremely potent Broncos pass rush. So I think he's going to have to get it out quick. There's going to be a lot of screens to Austin Eckler. That seemed to be working for him just fine over the last couple weeks. Denver is tied for the second fewest touchdown passes allowed. So we need to temper expectations for Herbie. At the top of tier four, it is Aaron Rodgers in a good matchup with the Jets here. He posted his first quarterback one finish of the season last week, and he gets to take advantage of this Jets matchup and drops himself inside the top 10 for the first time. And speaking of the top 10, do not look now, but Captain Kirk Cousins has finished there in two out of the last three weeks. The Miami Dolphins also allow the fourth most points per game to the position, so he is in for another big day. At 11, all the way up here, a little bit crazy to think about, but Geno Smith is my next guy. He gets Arizona, and this is all about what he has done on the field as of late. He's playing the best football of his career. He is the current QB6 on the season. He has finishes of QB7, 2, and 4 over the last three weeks. Now, logic would tell us that he is due to fall back down to earth. And I would normally agree with you, but the Cardinals allow top 10 numbers, not only in touchdown passes, but in points allowed to the position as well. So he's gonna come down, but it's not gonna be this week. Rounding out my QB ones, and a little bit painfully, I have Russell Wilson, who I really do not want to trust believe me, but the Chargers are allowing two touchdown passes a game so far, and the reliable options are starting to dwindle already, way more than we would like them to be. My unlucky number 13 is Carson Wentz. The Bears do not give up a lot of touchdowns through the air. However, they do surrender plenty of yardage, and that is what Wentz has been specializing in all season. He has been extremely volatile, 
So once again, like I said last week, he might be a QB 30 for you, or he might be in the top five or six, just like he was in week number five. To start off tier number five, I have Trevor Lawrence against Indy. He certainly has not been playing the best football of his career by any stretch of the imagination, and the turnovers are absolutely killing the Jags. But in week two, against this very defense, he did post a QB1 finish, so we know that there is some upside in this game. At 15, I have Matthew Stafford against Carolina, and speaking of quarterbacks who are not playing their best football, Stafford has been absolutely brutal lately. I do get that. But the Panthers just allowed Jimmy G a top 10 finish. And this feels like a week where the Rams are able to get right on offense. Speak of the devil, Jimmy G is in at 16. He could be possibly the perfect streaming option this week. And that's because he gets Atlanta, who gives up top 10 points of the position. And we know that Jimmy G isn't going to absolutely fall flat on his face because the weapons around him are too good. To headline tier number six, I have Zach Wilson. He gets the Green Bay Packers. He's got finishes of QB 10 and QB 17 in his first two games back. So owners would have taken that in a heartbeat. He has flashed the potential that caused the Jets to spend a top two pick on him a couple years ago. He's got plenty of playmakers, guys. All of them are breaking out. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, they are making life easy on him. So I think he does enough to warrant this positioning. At 18, I have Jacoby Brissett against New England. I am certainly hesitant to place him here after what New England just did to the Lions, but the Browns are at home here. They don't have to worry about playing on the road, and Brissett has not fallen outside of the top 16 in a month. He will be a QB2 once again. Next up is Justin Fields. He almost had a comeback win against my Vikings last week. It was stolen from him by a stupid block from ex-Minnesota Viking, Amir Smith-Marset. So thank you for doing that. Really appreciate it. But he did flash upside because of it. He finished inside the top 15 for the first time this season. And when we add in this matchup with Washington, they are bottom 12 in points per game to passers, yards per completion, and also passing scores allowed. I like his chances to elevate a little bit. 20 is Daniel Jones. He rounds it out and he gets the Ravens. He has been able to maintain fantasy relevancy with his legs. He's got 184 yards on the ground in his last three, including a couple of scores. He is going to put up his fourth top 20 finish in a row against the Ravens. Top of tier seven, it is Kenny Pickett. And blowout or not, he showed some promise last week by throwing for over 300 yards against that terrifying Bills defense. He gets another test here. And it is very likely that the Bucks get up big early so we could see the exact same outcome that we saw last week. 22 sees Matt Ryan. Absolutely nothing went right against Denver last week. And Andy needs Jonathan Taylor back in the worst way. It is still questionable to see if he is going to return. If he does, I like Ryan a heck of a lot more. But at least the Jags allow nearly 11 yards per completion. So that helps out Matty Ice a little bit to 23, and this is pending him being able to pass concussion protocol. It is Teddy Bridgewater. If he's back in action, he is probably not gonna have too much trouble moving the ball against the Vikings. They allow top 15 numbers to quarterbacks and top 10 in yards per completion. Minnesota also has nobody who can stick with either Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle. Bailey Zappi is at the top of tier number eight. Say that 10 times fast, you might like it. The Browns allow nearly 12 yards per catch, and the Jacoby Myers connection seems to be working out just fine for him. He is the best of what we have left. To round out my top 25, I have Marcus Mariota. It is hard to trust anyone playing the San Francisco defense right now, but you are bound to pick up some yards on the ground when you are running for your life, and he will be doing plenty of that in this game. With quarterbacks out of the way, quick reminder, Relentless Press drops content Monday to Saturday. I'm dropping it at 12 p.m. Pacific, 10 plus videos every single week. If you do not subscribe to the channel, you might miss something, so hit that button for me. It does so much. And now, let's hop in to kickers.
Fresh off a huge game last week, Justin Tucker once again finds himself at number one. He made all four field goals last week. He is a perfect nine for nine on the season. And even better, the Giants allow the fourth most points per game to the position. Evan McPherson is next. He's at two against New Orleans. And Tyler Bass, in what is going to be a high-scoring affair with Kansas City, slides in at three. The last kicker in tier number one is Will Lutz against Cincinnati. He's been hitting them from deep with ease. To tier two, I have Robbie Gold against Atlanta. And Matthew Wright, if he's still the guy, against Buffalo. Now, Harrison Butker might be back, but right now it is Wright. There is going to be fireworks in this game. I would take either leg to do damage in it. Greg Joseph is up next. He is at seven against Miami. He had some opportunities last week when we liked him, and they had one blocked and one missed. So could not convert, but they were still there. At eight, I have Ryan Suckup. And at the top of tier number three, I have Matt Gay against Carolina. I've said a little bit before, but I think the Rams start to get back on track to an extent against Carolina this week, and that means that there's going to be chances for Gay to produce. Mason Crosby rounds out my top 10, and Cameron Dicker against Dallas is my next dude once again, and that is if Jake Elliott is still out. The Eagles are going to move the ball against the Cowboys. They just have too many offensive weapons not to, but I am not sure they're gonna be able to punch it in so easily. That has been Dallas's MO on defense all season, and Dicker converted both of his field goal tries in relief last week. At the top of tier four, I have Brandon McManus against the Chargers. Jason Myers is up next, and Brett Maher is in at 14 against Philly. He has been on fire lately. I know he is hard to bench, but that Philly defense is something else. Rounding out my top 15, the last kicker I'm covering is Jason Sanders against Minnesota. Now he is off of this list if Teddy Bridgewater cannot go, but I think the Vikings are gonna have issues slowing down all of the speed on Miami's team if Bridgewater is there to deliver strikes or at least semi-strikes. And that is it for the video today. I hope you guys pulled some useful information from it that is gonna help you make better decisions this week so we can dominate our opponents and go get a dub. If you guys have any questions, please drop those down below. I love the engagement. It is one of the key reasons that I do this. I answer every question and comment that I receive. Start sits, trades, whatever they are, toss them my way. Hopefully I can help talk you through them. This is Relentless Press. I'm your host, Abraham Opatz, and we'll see you next time.